What's up awesome YouTubers, Ryan1988 or Justin back here to do a video for you guys and I have, uh, I'm going to do the series Gotta Love These 80 Slashers and do my pick but I have my, this is my first interview by the way here on YouTube but I have a, a really really cool guy on the phone, um, he's been a part of some really fun uh, slasher films and he also has a really cool uh, website called Slasher Studios and I'm going to introduce him now. Um, guest speaker, do you want to say your name and um, talk talk about uh, you know the slashers and the uh, slasher studios? I'm a little nervous. It's my first interview, so. Oh, not a problem. Um, I feel honored that I'm your first interview for your YouTube channel. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, my name is Kevin Summerfield. I run the Slasher Studios website. Um, it's anything and everything you've ever wanted to know about. Slasher movies with a special dedication to the 80 slashers. They're the ones that I grew up with. They're the ones that I've loved ever since I was a little kid. Um, I just feel like slasher movies out of all of the horror subgenres are always the most fun. You, um, they're predictable, but they're, they're great in their predictability. So um, I think that it's kind of this little subgenre that um, I think it's too often um, misunderstood in the horror community and I just think that they're a lot of fun and I wanted to just start my own website kind of dedicated to the horror movies that everyone kind of seems to forget. Oh yeah, I mean, they're, I, the slasher films are my favorite subgenre in the horror genre period and um, you know you have your good ones and you have your so bad they're good ones and you have your bad ones but for me I always think every one of them are entertaining, and the 80s definitely had some of the best slasher films, in my opinion. Yeah, and I completely agree. I mean, starting with, like, Friday the 13th and 1980, I mean, that was really kind of the movie that started the, the subgenre and showed, like, big studios that, hey, you can make a lot of money off of this. And, yeah, I mean, you you knew you were in a get in for, you're going to have usually a good final girl that you can really root for, some entertaining bloody deaths, and a good body count, so I mean, that's something that's kind of missing out of horror today, sadly. Oh yeah, I mean, like, when I, there's been some really good modern ones today, like, uh, The Sleeper, and Hatchet, and a few other ones I can name off, but definitely, you know, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, you know, there was something special about all those decades. And, uh, you know, you definitely don't have that too much today. But there have been some really good ones, like I mentioned, The Sleeper and um, Hatchet, Hatchet 2. Uh, really, really good ones out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are all kind of wonderful, kind of 80s homage um, type slashers. And yeah, I, I love them all as well, especially The Sleeper. I think that's kind of a an underrated gem that I don't think um, too many horror fans have heard of or really checked out. And it's, it's loads of fun. And um, I just, that, that was kind of one of my discoveries on DVD. And I'm like, wow, you know, why can't more horror movies today be like that? I mean, I just feel like they take themselves way too seriously today. Oh, I know. Th that one was just such a blast to watch. I remember, um, my friend, uh, Doug or Doug Lander. I don't know if you know him from Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, but he introduced The Sleeper to me, and I was like, this is such an awesome film. It's, you know, it, it definitely takes you back to the 80s. I mean, you had the practical kills, which were great, some really creative ones. And, you know, it's definitely my favorite type of slasher because it's a college slasher film. So, you know, there's okay. a lot working with that movie, and uh, it's just, it's a gem that a lot of people don't know about yet. And I, I hope that it keeps getting attention with the fans that it has and people listen to them and they're able to find it and watch it because it really, really needs more attention. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, now I am doing a, this week, uh, starting this week, I did a series called Gotta Love These 80s Slashers. And um, what really got me motivated to do this actually was your last week uh, theme for Slasher Studios, which was the college slashers. And um, 
I'm a big fan of the 80s. Uh, 80s slashers are the best. And uh, I wanted to really quickly recommend the uh, 1981 slasher today. And um, you're more than happy to help out with this one um, and give your opinions. But it's The Dorm That Drip Blood, which is probably the only college slasher film I have on my list. Um, I absolutely love this film. I think it's so much fun. And um, it's definitely one that kind of fell under the radar, and it's an 80s gem. <clears throat> Kevin, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. What did uh, you think of it? Yeah, um, it, it, it's a great, great little film. Um, I think that, I mean, it's definitely one of those college slashers that kind of has this problem. I think that the middle act is a little slow going. Um, but I think that the ending is so, it's one of the few slashers that's completely unpredictable. Oh, and no. the ending caught me by a complete surprise, especially, I don't want to give too much away, but um, something happens in this movie that very, very rarely happens in a slasher film. And you, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, I, oh, I do. I... The first time I ever saw this movie, I was like, why? Why did it happen? Um, I, I was so shocked. I was like, the way that they just, and again, not going to spoil anything, but the the way they went with this ending and with the final person, um, which I hope doesn't spoil too much, uh, was just like, it was crazy. Like the first time I watched it, I did not expect it. And then the, the killer. Um, it's kind of a shocker because you don't know who the killer is. You kind of guess who they could be, uh, but when it you find out who this killer is, it's kind of a surprise. Yeah, and I I was completely taken by surprise as well. Um, yeah, I just think that it's it's a wonderful little flasher. Um, I actually made the mistake with this movie um, when it first came out. Um, I did the I don't know close to a decade now. Um, I actually bought it under the movie Pranks, oh, yeah. which I didn't know anything about this movie, and I didn't realize that that movie was completely cut. I mean, almost all of the gore is taken out. Um, the original DVD was a terrible um, remaster, if you want to call it that, but I mean, it was just so dark, so grainy, you couldn't tell what was happening. And I didn't actually like the movie, and then um, when it was re-released on DVD Blu-ray under Drawing the Drip Blood, I gave the movie another chance, and I realized how much better the movie was than I originally gave it credit. And I, part of me is kind of um, leery of the fact that, you know, how many horror movies were, or how many horror movie fans were just like me and checked it out on that Pranks DVD and said, oh, this isn't a good movie. And um, that's kind of sad because they're, they're missing that. They're missing a really good little underappreciated gem. Yeah, like I, I, so there was a DVD before this. Uh, it was pranks. I, I heard about that, and I heard, I heard that, you know, the quality wasn't great, and a lot of people did not appreciate it. So, but um, if you haven't picked this up, which I, I believe you have the Blu-ray, Kevin, right? Yes, I do. It's, okay. it's a wonderful. There's so many great extras on there, and the picture quality. I don't think the movie would. It ever looks as good as what it does on there. I think it looks awesome. And if you guys haven't picked it up yet, definitely pick it up. It's a fun 1981. I believe it's 81, right? I could... I, I don't want to yeah. be... It's 81, okay. It's a fun slasher film. If you want to have a good time, eat popcorn, have a good drink, and watch this by yourself or with friends, I think people will be entertained by it. And also, I love the fact that Daphne Zubina, I believe from another slasher film that I think 84, The Initiation is in this movie. So, um, yeah, I think that's and great. She's, she's got a great little kind of chase scene. I mean, her scene is actually, I think, quite possibly the most suspenseful in the movie. And I, I love her and she was great in The Initiation. And I actually think that that's another kind of underappreciated college slasher. I completely agree. I love it. and. Um, real quickly, and then we'll go on to the questions. Uh, the initiation, um, if you've seen Going to Pieces, you know, it kind of gives you a glimpse of the movie, but there's some little twist at the end that, you know, kind of shocks you the first time you see it. Mm -hmm. So, but yes, I recommend The Dorm That Drip Blood, and um, if you love college slasher films, and if you love 80s slasher films, this is definitely one to check out. 
So, um, okay, now yeah, going on. Agree. Oh, yes. Now going on to questions. Um, the first nine or eight questions um, are going to be in part one because it's basically going to be talking about the films you've been involved with and uh, I believe Slasher Studios. I think that's going to be in part two. But um, the first question I have is how did you, and I believe Steve, uh, what's it, how do you pronounce his last name? Oh, uh, Steve Gold. Goltz, how did you guys come up with both popular, Popularity Killer and Teddy? Well, um, different story behind each. Uh, I had actually graduated a year before Steve from college, and he was working on his senior thesis film. And he had never done a horror movie before. He's always loved the genre, just like me. And he said, you know, I really want to make a short film um, that really kind of encapsulates our love for 80s slashers. And I went back and I watched movies like Friday the 13th, Sleepaway Camp, and I just said to myself, I really want to make, you know, not necessarily a camp horror movie, but I mean, just kind of, you know, the like wilderness look. Um, it's something that's just not done in horror today. And I really wanted to have that, you know, that, that feeling of the 1980s horror movies of the something going wrong and because of this or, you know, the sin of the past is, is very common, especially in 80s slashers, um, coming back and haunting the people that were involved for and Teddy in this accident. And we came up with that idea. We worked on a few rewrites over a few months. We tried to perfect it as much as we could. And we tried to think of the, the best deaths that we possibly um, could get away with using only practical effects. We're both strongly, strongly against um, the use of CGI in horror films unless it's absolutely needed. And we just took one weekend. Um, he was going to school in Arizona. I flew down there to make it with him. We got a great cast involved. And that was the beginning of Teddy. Which I freaking loved it. I watched it last I watched both of them last night, but Teddy, I think out of the two really stood out because that one was just so much fun and uh I didn't want it to end. I was like, keep going with this because I I loved a lot of things about it. The practical effects, the kills, which we'll be talking about. That's another question in a little bit. But uh oh, I, I loved it. And I love the the killer's costume. I thought that was great. I think you have to have a good costume in a slasher film for a killer. Oh, I totally agree. And we actually did a show um, on our Slasher Studios webcast that was all about our favorite um, horror movie costumes and our favorite, you know, horror movie masks because I think that a villain is only as strong or as powerful or as memorable as, you know, what his outfit is. I mean, if, if you fail there, I mean, and your villain's not scary or not menacing, I mean, you kind of got a, an uphill battle with your horror movie. Oh, I know, and... You know, usually you see the killer's costume on the uh, VHS cover or the DVD cover, so that's what really sells it too, is the costume. When they, when the audience sees that poster or sees that cover and they're like, I want to check that one out. Yep. So, and then Popularity Killer, how did that one come along? Um, Popularity Killer, um, we had finished Teddy and we were kind of shopping Teddy around. Um, we've gotten some really, really good feedback on Teddy. We've gotten into a few film festivals, and we're just like, hey, like we had such a blast making this one. Um, let's make another one, and let's be even more ambitious. I mean, Teddy was about 12 minutes. Teddy was about 20. Um, we doubled our cast. We have about three times as many locations. Um, and I really went to, and for those of you who haven't seen it, um, check it out. It's on, it's on Vimeo. It's also on C-Flick. Um, or you can buy a copy from Slasher Studios. But um, just kind of mute it for like the next minute or so because I'm going to get something major away. But um, um, I always like it when it, there's a female killer. And I said to myself, especially after watching, because I originally wrote the script shortly after watching Screen 4, yeah. I said, you know, what What if um, Jill had gotten away with this? What if 
she, you know, she's our main girl. She's the one that's introduced. This is kind of her story. You know, what if, what if she got away with this? What would happen then? And that was kind of the genesis behind the idea for Popularity Killer. Which I loved. Like, uh, that was another one I loved. Loved both of them. But with Popularity Killer, I never saw the killer coming. I was like, who's it going to be? Never, ever expected. And again, spoilers for you guys. So kind of like, you know, fast forward the next uh, two minutes or so. Um, but I, I loved the fact that you found out that the killer was the, the lead girl. Like, I was totally shocked with that. I was like, who could this killer be this whole time? And then you find out it was her, and the twist was great. And I, and I love that the, the title, Popularity Killer, fits it so well. Because, you know, with that twist, it, it does fit really, really well with the title. Yeah, and with Popularity Killer, I mean, like I said before, um, Teddy was kind of like our homage to uh, Friday the 13th and those kind of styles of... Um, filmmaking and slashers and then I mean we we done our eighties one with Teddy and I think that Popular Killer is very much in the nineties tradition of the uh, you know, the knowing kids and the who done it and we kinda of made wanted to make our own, you know, scream or I know she last summer, those kind of slashers, which yeah. I don't feel like get the acclaim that they really deserve. I think they're oh, really, man. really, really fun, well-made movies. But for some reason, um, hardcore horror fans just seem to have such a grudge against um, 90s horror, and I just don't understand why. I don't I don't think this is fun as 80s horror, but um, there's certainly definitely some gems from that decade. Oh, I agree. I mean, they're definitely not as fun as the 80s horror because he had a lot of fun 80s flicks out there. But with the 90s, like, I remember uh, renting Scream on VHS when it came out. And I watched it like three times before I took it back because I absolutely loved it. Um, and then, like, I remember renting I Know What You Did Last Summer and seeing Urban Legend. And those were some of the first ones I saw. And, um, you know, they're definitely, when it comes to the 80s and the 90s slasher films, I think the 90s horror movies overall are, over, or not overrated, underrated movies. I mean, I think the well-known one is Scream overall. And then the other ones kind of just kind of slipped away a little bit. You have I Know What You Did Last Summer, which is pretty well-known. But basically, Urban Legend, um, a early 2000 one called Valentine just kind of fell under. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just don't, I don't understand why that really happened. Or, I mean, even going back a little bit further than that, I mean, early in the decade, there were some great horror movies, too. I mean, we had stuff like The People in the Stairs, and West Pregnancy Nightmare, and Candyman. Oh, um, those are all kind of forgotten, too, for whatever reason. And I just, I don't understand why. I don't know why, if it's that tiny. Or maybe it's just gotten to the point where, you know, the 90s was a decent amount of time ago, but maybe, maybe not enough time has passed where we can really appreciate these movies for what they are, like we can with the 80s horror movies today. Oh, I agree. I mean, I you know, Candyman is one of my all-time favorite movies. It's in my top, I believe, top 20 or top 10 favorite horror movies of all time. And that one... Every time I watch it now, I still get creeped out over that movie. I think it's so creepy, and it's a very classic uh, slasher film when it comes to, mm -hmm. you know, the gore, and it's very classical, in my opinion. Yeah, and definitely, I mean, it's it's definitely, it's definitely a classy style horror movie. I mean, just everything about it. I mean, you don't have kind of the, the dumb teenagers. I mean, you have a very smart, um, attractive lead who um, you really root for and I think that maybe part of what um, people don't like about Candyman is just the fact that it's just so damn depressing. I mean I, I adore Candyman. I think it's wonderfully made. I think the gore is great the acting is wonderful um, the score is chilling but at the same time I mean that's not a movie that I can watch over and over and over again because it's just so dark, and I mean, I think it kind of, and this is very common with a lot of, um, you know, Clive Barker type films, is that they kind of take you to a place where you don't know if you want to go. Oh, so, I agree. Um, I think that that is part of the power of that movie. Oh, I, I really, really agree on that. I mean, 
for me, I can't watch it all the time either, but when I do watch it, um, it's still one of those ones that is creepy, um, it's depressing, but it's, it's a really, really enjoyable film, and I thought the lead, Virginia uh, Madsen, I thought she was honestly probably in my top 10 favorite kind of final girl, scream queen uh, type of women. And um, I just absolutely love it. That's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I completely agree. Well, the next question I have is um, dealing with the killer's costumes in both Teddy and Popularity Killer. Um, where did you guys come up with those costumes? Um, well, with Teddy, what we decided to do was, um, we knew right away, I mean, we wanted to kind of, I mean, the killers got this bear with them. And we wanted it immediately. I mean, we both thought, we were both on completely the same page, that we wanted the, the mouth to be stitched. We thought that was going to be really, really, really creepy. And we just said to ourselves, you know, hey, what if... What if the killer kind of has a ski mask that looks very similar to the bear and also has kind of the stitched mouth? Because, I mean, this, you know, symbolizes, you know, the, the killer, what, for whatever reason, can't talk. Um, I can leave that up to the interpretation of the audience, especially the fact that it is such a short film. I mean, you can read into it many different ways, but we just thought that the two would tie together perfectly and that it would be um, nice and creepy. I like that idea, like having the, the stitched, uh, well, is it, I, I'm probably getting the name wrong, ski mask. I like that whole idea that you went with the stitched up mask that kind of, you know, is reminiscent, uh, can't get the word right, it reminds you of a teddy bear. Uh, so that really, really worked well, and I thought it was actually kind of creepy at times. I thought that, you know, the, the costume was fun and creepy. Really, really enjoyed it, and I think, like we were talking about, you know, the the costumes and slasher films being one of the most important things. I think you guys really nailed that when it came to Teddy a lot. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we definitely tried to be kind of as creepy as possible, but at the same time, I mean, we wanted it to be fairly believable. I mean, it's at the end of the day, I mean, it's just you know a ski mask. I mean, he's out in the mountains, you know. It's something that she could honestly have, you know, as opposed to, you know, some horror movies that you watch and you're like, well, how'd they get that? Yeah. So um, we definitely wanted to play a little bit with uh, the believability where um, the audience, was, it's not something that they would question. Oh, I agree. And sometimes that's the, the way to work it, though. I mean, uh, you know, you can have like a, a simple costume. Uh, but it, it works well with it, and I think that's what's great about Teddy is that it's a really, really good costume. And uh, you're right, you know, the the audience would not really question of you know how this person got their costume, like in some other uh, slasher films. Mm -hmm. And then with Popularity Killer, uh, the costume for that one, what kind of uh, inspired uh, you guys to come up with that one? Well, um, we definitely knew right away, right from the very beginning of writing a script, I'm like, I, this has to be a black cloak. I mean, we're doing a 90s homage, um, very much in the vein of Scream. I want it to be very similar to that. But for the mask, I kind of wanted to take something else in a different decade. And I've always loved, loved the, the religious horror film, Alice Sweet Alice. Oh, so that's what, what I... To do. <laughs> That's what I thought about when I was watching it, and I was about to mention that to you. When I saw the mask, I was like, Alice, sweet Alice. Mix of Scream and Alice, sweet Alice, and it looks great. Well, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, with the Alice, sweet Alice mask, I mean, we definitely wanted to incorporate that in this movie, but I mean, part of the problem with that is the fact that, um, especially if you have a lot of close-ups to the mask, I mean, you're going to be able to see that it's a girl, and you're going to be able to see that it's someone young. So, I mean, I didn't want to give that away as to who the killer was. So, um, we just had a really, really easy solution. We just painted the inside of the mask kind of um, um, a skin type color. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it actually looked like a face with makeup on it as opposed to kind of the clear Alice Sweet Alice look. And yeah, yeah that actually ended up working out really well. And I think that. That added a ni nice little creepy tone too that we weren't really expecting as before, you know, when we painted the mask, you know. It was creepy before that, but 
the more it looked like an actual face, we found that um, it kind of gave it another eerie touch. I agree. And like that mask and the mask in Alice Sweet Alice. I mean, there's a shot in Alice Sweet Alice that's really creepy with the uh, the mask is when you have the eyes, just the eyes moving and looking at the uh, one of the victims. And it's a it's a famous shot and I've seen it in like going to pieces and that always creeped me out. And uh, definitely the the killer's costume and popularity killer worked really well. And it was eerie and creepy, especially in the nighttime scenes in the beginning of the film where the first victim gets it. I found that to be like one of the eeriest scenes in that movie. Um, but you guys did a great job with that costume and with Teddy, and I was very, very impressed with those when I watched them. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you really liked it. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, Teddy and Popularity Killer, that was kind of, that was, that was completely our entire last year. I mean, we went from writing, uh, pop, uh, writing Teddy in, like, January mm -hmm. of last year we filmed in the end of february we had it out in april we wrote the script for popularity killer all over the summer and then we filmed shot that in september and then it was editing for the rest of the year so I mean, those two movies were kind of our our entire year of uh work last year so i mean it, it really to hear stuff like that is really uh a wonderful compliment, and I'm really glad to hear that people are really enjoying these films because that's the reason that they were made. I mean, these are the kind of the movies that we love, and we just kind of wanted wanted to share our love of the genre with other horror fans. I think you guys really, really pulled it off, and you know, going back to the '80s and '90s, Phil. I think if you watch Teddy, I think if people watch it, they're definitely going to get that '80s feel and they're gonna have a fun time with it, and it's one of those uh, films to like have popcorn with and uh, laugh and possibly get scared. Um, I had more fun watching it though, like I don't really get scared too much with horror films today, uh, but that one was just like a, a fun ride. That's how I can describe mm -hmm. Teddy. And you know, if they wanna watch a 90s type slasher film, then definitely Popularity Killer is the way to go. Have a double feature, that's how I'd put it. <laughs> so, okay, uh, next question. Let's see if this is the right one. Um, how, well, let's see. Okay, fun kills. I love fun kills. In slasher films, you have to have the fun kills. And I thought in both Popularity Killer and Teddy, you guys pulled it off so well. So, my question is, how do you guys come up with those kills? Um, it's literally just kind of brainstorming back and forth. I mean, literally, um, I, I love working with Steve for, the, for that very fact, because we'll, like, I'll text him or I'll give him a call and I'll say, hey, I have an idea for a really fun kill. Like, this, I mean, because I... I wrote both movies and he directed them and I think you know I'll be like this, this is my idea you know I think this would be really fun and this would be a nice homage to this movie or I think this would really really work and you know I kind of just leave it up to him and say you know is this something that we can pull across you know is this something that we can can pull off in the long run and you know, God bless him and the fact that, you know, every single death that I've kind of thrown at him, he's found a way to make work. So, I mean, that's, that's even way more, and way more for him than it is for me. But, um, yeah, I just kind of come up with the ideas, throw them out there, and see if it's something that we can, we can accomplish. And, I mean, that's, for those of you guys who've worked in horror movies, especially in independent horror movies, I mean, you spend so much time on your desk, especially when you do practical effects. I mean, there there were times when, um, you know, for a popularity killer where we would have a very long, exhaustive death, like like the death at the very beginning of popularity killer, yeah. or the death when, um, when one of the girls gets her ankle sweat underneath the car. I mean, those those were whole day shoots and just doing that. So I mean, oh it, wow time consuming but when you get it exactly right for how you want it um 
it's it's completely worth it and um i i can't i can't thank everyone who is involved in those movies enough for just having the patience i mean there's a scene um in teddy where where a girl um she's grabbed by the hair and thrown into into the cooler and you get a, a funny oh, yeah. shot of what what her face looks like in the cooler i mean it was 20 degrees out i mean we were doing that to her and her hair was completely frozen and she was an absolute great score we did that like five or six times and then she rushed in to get um to get warm but i mean we couldn't have done that stuff without actors that said you know hey you know i'm up for the ride let's do this i think that's cool uh, you know that is definitely awesome and and in Teddy, that's like one of the best deaths because you do have that um, uh, camera angle where you're seeing her face go into the cooler. And, uh, you know, especially with that snowy weather, I mean, that takes a lot of courage for somebody to do that. And um, it, it worked out great. It pulled it off really, really well. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad, to, I'm glad that you enjoyed it because, yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite shots and actually both of the movies. I think that that, that whole death is just really, really, really fun. And I, I couldn't be more pleased with how it ended up turning out. Okay, well, I have to mention, and if you guys want to skip ahead with this, you guys can or mute it. Um, but you're in Teddy, and when I saw your death, I was like, Wow. I mean, that was just like pure fun and that was really creative. Um, and honestly, I don't want to see your character character go because you were the nice one. You were one of the nice people in that movie. <laughs> and I was like, don't kill him off. Let him survive. You know, he's making a hot dog. Just let him eat his hot dog and let him survive this movie. But the kill was very, very fun. And I had such a good time watching it. I thought it was great. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm really glad that you liked that kill. Um, it's funny because we talked about, I talked about how he actually managed, he actually made this for his um, thesis film for um, at Arizona State University. And that death um, was actually the reason that we were not played in the senior program. Oh, and wow. it did not have its debut at Arizona State University because um, some faculty members said that it was offensive uh, towards gay men. Um, you'll have to watch the movie for those of you who haven't seen it to uh, judge for yourself. Um, we refused to cut it. They said that there was no way that it was being played unless we cut the scene completely. Our entire movie would not have made sense because what would have happened to my character? And we were not going to back down. I mean, that was really our first instance of when you know we um incorporated um when we were introduced to kind of censorship of horror movies but it's just it's silly to me i mean there's not a single person in the world i think that would take that death seriously so um i still to this day i mean that was a year ago that was last may um i still don't get it to this very day and i i just don't understand it. i don't think i ever will well, you know, I think with slasher fans and horror movie fans, you know, when people watch that, they'll be like automatically assuming that it is a fun, just a fun scene. It's a fun death. And, uh, you know, I definitely hate, um, especially with these fun slasher films, like I know Hatchet went, ha Hatchet went uh, through with, or went uh, with this, or went through with this, um, and uh, you were talking about how um, if you did not cut out that death scene, they weren't going to show that. But I hate censorship and how films like Hatchet and your film uh, get complained about because of these fun kills. Be and, you know, they're all... I'm, I get tongue twisters, but they're just fun kills, and, you know, they shouldn't be taken serious. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, too, I mean, just looking at, you know, censorship in general, and, I mean... We have, we're far away from dealing with something like the NPAA, but um, I don't know. I mean, there's a complete double standard, too. I mean, if you're working in Hollywood, working for a major studio, um, you can pretty much get away with anything. I mean, yeah. th there's no boundaries. And when you're working independently, and I mean, the NPAA, many of the people that work for them are, you know, members of major studios, and they don't, they don't want to see these independent films succeed because that's taking away from their profit margin. So, of course, 
they're going to be more harsh on them. And if they can't get an R rating, then they can't be played in, you know, thousands of theaters and they can't take money away from the other studios. I mean, it's just kind of a vicious circle and it's really, really, really sad. Yeah, I think it's definitely unfair for independent filmmakers uh, when the MP MPAA uh, come up to them and say, we have to cut this out when you have films like Hostel and the Saw franchise that, you know, when you watch those, you have, like, some of the goriest deaths you'll ever see in a horror film, and yet, you know, there's no censor censorship at all on some of those brutal deaths. But with films like, with a film like yours, Teddy, Hatchet, and many other independent films, they get criticized for these just fun kills. They're supposed to be fun kills. Yeah, and I mean, there's nothing to be taken seriously in them. I mean, anyone who who takes a slasher film seriously or anyone who's offended by that sort of thing is not going to be a member of the audience for that movie anyway. So, I mean, I just, I don't understand what the point is for cutting down a film or censoring a film for somebody who's never going to watch it in the first place. Oh, I agree. And I think uh, the audience, uh, when people go see these uh, slasher films, the audience is going to be fans. And, uh, you know, you're never going to have, like, an, an, an average, like, uh, you might have an old lady go see these films, but, you know, most of the time when people go see these slasher films, they're fans of slasher films. And, uh, you know, they're just that they're there to have a good time. So if that made sense. You there, Kevin? Yep. Okay. Um, now going on to the next question, and it is, you know, basically, how's the press going for Teddy? Because I noticed you guys just recently went to a couple of festivals. Yeah, um, we, oh God, Teddy has been, um, we, we got so lucky in the fact that Teddy was our first film. Um, it was kind of one of those lightning in a bottle type things. Um, everything worked out perfect. I mean, we've probably gotten a good 20 reviews online. They've all been, for the most part, universally positive. Um, great things from everyone. Um, we premiered, we had our theatrical premiere um, in April, actually. Um, April, it was Friday the 13th. And um, we had a, our premiere in the theater in Chicago. And that was part of the Chicago Fear Fest, which, I mean, we were talking about... Um, we were talking about Hatchet earlier. I mean, one of the special hosts of that was Adam Green, the, the writer and director of the Hatchet franchise. Yeah. And he was there as well as um, Joe Lynch, who did um, Wrong Turn 2. And uh, Teddy went over great. I mean, everyone was just talking about it. Uh, we had a lot of people come up to us and just say how much they liked it, how much, you know, this was the kind of horror movie, horror movie that they were missing. You know, today everything is kind of found footage. Um, supernatural, um, that that kind of horror movie, and you don't get slashers that much today. And we ended up winning the the audience favorite award at Chicago Fair Fest um, this net, this last weekend. Uh, we had another screening of it near the Chicago area at Monster Mashup. Yeah. And then in August, we will be special um, guests at Flashback Weekend. Um, in Chicago, um, they're having a bunch of horror people there. Uh, John Carpenter, Linda Blair, oh, wow. um, Adrian King. Um, they're having this big Friday the 13th um, reunion. It's Adrian King, Kimberly Beck, uh, Amy Steele, Kate Hodder, um, Danielle Harris is also going to be there. I mean, it's a huge, huge event. And we're so honored to be part of this and to be into this kind of horror inner circle. I mean, we, we, we can't thank them all enough and we can't thank any, any, anyone out there enough who's really spent time um, watching our movies and just kind of um, cheering us along because we couldn't do it without them. Well, I think, you know, and if, and if people haven't seen Teddy yet, they really, really need to because, you know, you were talking about um, shaky cam footage, ghost story films today, and that's basically what we've been seeing. And if people want to see a very, very fun slasher film with gory, fun kills, 
Um, and they just want to have a good time. They definitely, definitely need to check out Teddy. Um, and I can honestly say it's definitely uh, one of the recent horror movies that I've seen that really stands out. And it's up there with The Sleeper and with Hatchet and all those fun films that I remember or that I see when I look at um, 80s and 90s slasher films. Yeah, and that's, that's awesome. I mean, we, you know, thank you so much for saying that because, I mean, that, that, that means the absolute world to us. And, you know, I, I got to say, you know, with making movies like Teddy and Top of the Eric Killer, you know, if there's, if there's somebody out there who's kind of, you know, watching, um, you know, horror movies for, like, the first time, I mean, I the biggest goal more than anything else was to just, kind of introduce this kind of world of slasher to a whole new audience. And if, there, if there's somebody out there who, for the first time, you know, if they're 12, 13, 14, whatever, um, who watches Teddy and says, you know, hey, I want to see more movies like this and kind of go back to the 80 slashers and the lens a bunch or buys some or even checks in one online. I mean, that that's been our biggest goal since the very beginning. And so, I mean, that's why we do this. And I think that's fantastic. And, um, you know, I, I think when, you, you know, a younger audience, like you said, 13, 14 year old kids or teenagers would watch Teddy, I think they would they would love it. And they would say, you know, I definitely want to see more because one of the first ones I ever saw were like Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween, Scream, uh, I know what you did last summer. And that got me really wanting to see more uh, horror films. So I think Teddy, Teddy, could do that and would do that with an audience. Yeah, I mean, our hope is someday, I mean, it's, it's gonna be a ways on the road, but I mean, I mean, I would love to see Teddy kind of, um, I would like to flash all the characters a little bit more, give them a little bit more backstory, and I would love to see it get made into a feature. I mean, we have so many projects ahead of us this weekend, we're filming Blood Brothers, which is kind of, um, more of a traditional kind of hostage style thriller. It's our first kind of slight departure outside of the flasher genre. But um, immediately right after that, we're making a feature called um, Don't Go to the Reunion, oh, which wow. is very, very much an 80s um, homage to slashers um, with a really, really good twist, I think, adds to. Um, uh, having the killer, I don't want to give too much away, but I'll just say having the killer influenced by his favorite horror movies of the 80s. Um, and I can't wait to make that movie because I think that one's just going to be an absolute blast. And we have some really, really, really great kills lined up for that one. And I love, real quickly, I love the fact that you're using the word don't because if you remember, you had a lot of those come out in the 80s with don't go in the woods, <laughs> don't go in the house. <laughs> Don't go in the basement. Um, and I think that's just great. So that, that can already, you know, when people hear that title, like for me, you know, I automatically think 80s slasher feel. So I'm, I'm wishing you guys the best on both of those projects. And I, I really hope they go well. And I, I'm sure they're going to be awesome. Yeah, thank you very much. And I mean, we were stuck on this title um, for our reunion in horror movie forever. And um, I gotta give a special shout out to um, Jeffrey Lee from Facebook because he's like, you're doing an 80s homage, you gotta call this, don't go to the reunion. And as soon as he said this, um, I'm like, yeah, that's our title. I mean, we don't have to look anymore. This is exactly what the movie's about. It's fun, it's campy, it's a slightly over the top. I mean, of course, you know, we're gonna do the Don't Go to the Reunion. It's gonna have the exclamation point after it. And we're just gonna kind of milk it for all it's worth. <laughs> uh, I think it's gonna be great. And I wanna give a shout out to Jeffrey Lee because he's a good friend of mine and he loves his horror movies and he, and he knows his 80s slasher films, so, you know, when he came up with that title, you know, I, I, I just got to give him two thumbs up. So, but um, are yeah, you ready? I mean, it's just a terrific little title. <laughs> I think it's going to be fun. I can't wait. So I am looking forward to your two projects. And again, I want to wish you guys the best with those. So I, you know, and again, I, I'm sure they're going to turn out awesome and a lot of fun. And um, I, I can't wait to see them. 
Yeah, I mean, thank you very much. And I mean, we can't we can't wait to make that. I mean, we're just so unbelievably excited. I mean, this has just been an absolute roller coaster ride um, from beginning to end, and it's really only started within the last kind of year and a half, which is really really crazy. Everything's kind of happening so fast, and I mean, Don't Go There will be our first feature, and I can't wait to see how that turns out. I mean, how we're able to handle it and. Um, it, it's going to be interesting, but it's going to be a ton of fun, and I I can't wait. I mean, it's, it's the most excited I've been about a project since I was petty. So, I mean, if, oh, we, wow. if we can pull it off, I guarantee you, for such a parents out there, there's going to be a lot of really good twists and turns, as well as some wonderfully gory and at least one absolutely creative death that's going to come out of nowhere that hopefully will have people talking for a while. Oh, I can't wait to see it, and um, definitely though, I, w I definitely want to give a, a big uh, shout out to uh, your two previous movies, Popularity Killer and Teddy. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, um, where are some places, uh, I think you mentioned in the beginning, but where are some places they could check those out? Yeah, um, they're both on um, C-Flick, which um, is spelled um, S-E-E-F-L-I-K. Okay. Um, dot com. Um, that's actually kind of a contest that we're in right now. So you guys can watch them on there. Um, and then there's two different options. You can either pick flick or flop. And right now there's over 400 movies on there. We're currently in the top 10 for both movies, which is awesome. But um, if we get in the top three, um, we make it to the next round and possibly um, get funding for our feature, which would be incredible. So I mean, definitely go on there, um, hopefully rate both movies flicks, and um, it's also on Vimeo, we have Teddy up on YouTube, and if you really, really, really want to support um, independent films, um, go to Slasher Studios, uh, you can buy the combo pack of both Teddy and Popularity Killer, it's only 10 bucks, and it's lo they're both loaded with special features. Um, they both have a commentary, as well as some trailers, some behind the scenes stuff, some photos. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you want to purchase it, it's only 10 bucks for both movies. Um, so it's a pretty good deal, and there's, like I said, lots of special features on there. So um, hopefully we can get some, some more people to kind of support it. And then of course, I mean, we use all the money that we make on there to kind of help fund our next movies. Well, after watching them, though, I'm definitely going to pick them up, and uh, friends who have not seen them that I know, I'm definitely going to introduce those movies to them, because I think that that would just be a fun double feature to watch. Yeah, definitely, and I mean, like I said, I mean, that means the world to us, and it's, it's all about the word of mouth, and I mean, if people are liking them, spreading the word, I mean, we really can't ask for more than that. Well, guys, if you want to go check out Teddy and Popularity Killer, definitely go try to pick it up. See if you can buy it off the website, and I'm going to leave that link down below. And um, if you can afterwards, can you send me those other links for where people can check those out, and I'll put them down in the description? Yep, not a problem. I can definitely do that. Okay, guys, this is going to be part one, and I'm going to be back with part two with Kevin again, and we are going to be talking about Slasher Studios, and I also have some fun questions for you. So uh, thank you guys for watching part one, and part two will be up soon as well. Awesome.